On today's show, we are rebooting the podcast because I recently had the pleasure of checking out Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. KB ended up seeing Zombieland Double Tap, and you'll hear our non-spoiler reviews for both of those films. In addition, KB also played the new Zombieland video game, and you'll hear his thoughts on the gameplay. The Walking Dead is also back with Season 10. What do we think of the story so far? Where do we think it's going to go? Also, the CW has dropped a new Batwoman series. And how does that show fit in with the other current CW superhero shows? And speaking of new series, a new Watchmen series has started on HBO. Does it do the original graphic novel justice? Yes, it's all about premieres sequels and reboots on episode 82 of free your geek by the power of grayskull you have failed this city Torpentine. Winter is coming. Finish him! Fatality. Matt, Matt, Matt. Matt, Matt, Matt. Matt, Matt, Matt. Matt, Matt, meow. And welcome to the Free Your Geek podcast. I am your host, Jay Free. With me, my co host. KB. KB, welcome back. You had a couple, uh, you had like a month and a half a off. Mini hiatus for me. Yeah, dude, you know, traveling for work, traveling for fun. We did a WWE draft while you were gone, yep. so it's not really your wheelhouse. So yep. uh, glad to have you back. And we, we, it's been a, it's been a minute. Uh, fall, the fall previews have come and gone already. Mm-hmm. You know, the fall series have started some television shows. We're going to be talking about that. But there's been some new movies, and we're going to talk about that as well. And it's kind of interesting because. One movie I saw, the other movie you saw, and we haven't seen the others, you know, each other's movies. So we're going to keep this very and non- one neither of us saw. Right, we, we, we were going to do. We were going to review the Joker. We just never got around to it. Um, I still need to see that, to be I honest. Too, with you. So. Yeah. So um, maybe this weekend. Yeah, perhaps. Maybe we'll check it out this weekend. Yeah. We'll do it next week's show. That I'm not promising though. No, no promises. Uh, okay, so let's let's get right into it. Um, there was a limited release, uh, Jay and Silent Bob reboot. So fans of the View Askew universe, Kevin Smith, you know, Clerks, Dogma, Chasing Amy, Mall Rats. Uh, back in 2001, had his movie called uh, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Mm-hmm. Um, and in this this movie, uh, Jay and Silent Bob reboot, was done post-Kevin Smith heart attack. Um, and it essentially is the reboot of Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. So it's essentially the exact same movie. Um, and it kind of makes fun of the superhero genre a little bit, too. It's like you know some of the underlying themes, such as Oh, we're going to reboot this franchise with a new actor. It's going to be the same storyline. Yeah. Um, so it was they weren't doing the acting, right? They they were. Oh, they, they were, were in it. It was still Jay okay. and Silent Bob. So basically, to in a, in a quick summation, Jay and Silent Bob strike back back in two thousand one. Yep. And Jay and Bob, Jay and Silent Bob were actually uh, characters in a comic book on yep. the Chasing Amy movie, and then they had superhero alter egos called Blunt Man and Chronic, and their secret identities were Jay and Silent Bob. So in in Jay and Silent Bob strike back. <laughs> Uh, they find out that Miramax is making a movie on Blunt Man and Chronic, but so because they're all they're getting uh, bashed on the internet as Jay and Silent Bob, they decide to go and stop the movie from happening. Mm-hmm. In this particular movie, they're finding out now. Uh, this is a minor spoiler, but it won't give away anything. That they can no longer use their likenesses of Jay and Silent Bob because it's owned now uh, by uh, Saban Entertainment, which I believe is the same company that owns the Power Rangers. <laughs> and I think there's an inside joke. Actually, with that. Hasbro owns the Power Rangers. Oh, now, that's but, true. Yeah. That's true. Hasbro show them show yeah. them some love. Yeah. That's Saban back in the day. Yep. Um, so anyway, so basically they're rebooting Blunt Man and Chronic, and they recast in the original Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Blunt Man and Chronic were played by Jason Biggs and James Vanderbeek. Now it's uh, there's two new actors and they they gender swapped one of the roles. So Jay and Silent Bob are pissed and they're going to Hollywood to stop this movie from being made. And it's just it's just really really fun. Um, 
uh, I just really, really liked it. it you know, if, if you're a fan of the Kevin Smith like type of movies, those universe, it's mm-hmm. just all the other characters from previous movies, uh, from Clerks, from uh, Chasing Amy, Ben Affleck, Matt Damon were both in it. Does uh, Rosario Bucks. Dawson make an appearance? Rosario Dawson makes an appearance. Um, you know, you see Dante and Randall from Clerks, uh, you know, um, Banky and Holden from uh, Chasing Amy. There, there's so many good, so many good um, cameos, uh, and inc- including other more recent cameos, other mm-hmm. superheroes in the genre from maybe some Marvel movies or KB. KB is allergic to me. He's going to sneeze. Uh, I told him and I stopped. <laughs> He he made the he made the gesture like he was going to sneeze. And I was about to. Me just saying it uh, actually prevented it's my from kryptonite. Happening. That's that's my superpower. <laughs> um, speaking of superpowers, there is in in honor or in homage to the Marvel movies. There's also a, a post credit scene. Well, he's such a huge fan of those. He is, and it's speaking of. He also has during the credits. I believe it is. If you're gonna check this out, I think it's gonna start like slowly being released into the theaters. Mm-hmm. But there's a Stan Lee cameo. Really? And, yeah, there's a, there, it's basically happened uh, before Kevin Smith's heart attack. It was on, I think, like a, maybe like one of those San Diego Comic-Cons mm-hmm. he was having an interview. So it was still like bigger Kevin Smith um, and just having like a conversation with Stan Lee about being in uh, Jane Silent Bob reboot or being in the next Jane <laughs> Silent Bob movie. And just like the interaction between the two of them, you could see the reverence that Kevin yeah. Smith had for Stan Lee. And it was just like, you know, it was just it was touching to see that. So if you're if you're a fan of Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back or any of the uh, Jay and Silent Bob movies or movies that they appear in in the View Askew universe, uh, definitely check it out. A little off topic here, but I wonder what Kevin Smith thinks of Corsi, uh, Scorsese and Coppola's comments about the MCU. That's a good question. Uh, I'm sure he's he's probably already spoke on it. I just haven't I haven't read. I haven't it. seen anything from him. That's why I was I was curious. And and I understand. I mean, not to go on a on a no. We don't want to go here, too far off. But I think you know everybody's got a right to their opinion. You know, of these course. are filmmakers that look at it as an art, and you know they think yep. that you know maybe uh, these are just like popcorn flicks, like big budget, just like explosions and stuff. But that that don't is have, what they are, sort of. Right, but that, that they don't have <laughs> yeah. that real like story and that heart, and it's not really art to them. And that's okay, but yeah. and I hate to use the 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 old adage like what is art to art is yeah. different things to different to people. You know, you can have you can have somebody draw like on a canvas, paint on a canvas or or do you know, graphic design, it's still art. Yeah, you don't see us going to paint, you know, art museums with paintings. Well, yeah, but you don't also don't see us on a in a professional studio yeah. recording a professional podcast. That this is a hobby, but it's still art what yes. we do in that respect. Yeah. So I think you know, I think their their thought is is that, you know, they put like more they try to do something more um for lack of a better term, a little bit more intelligent, a little bit yeah. more with heart and like a good storyline that's not paint by numbers. Which, you know, a lot of the Marvel movies have the same, like, overall... You, I'm using Marvel movies in and of itself, but a lot of the Marvel movies have the same thing. Okay, it's a hero. He goes through the struggle. We have the villain that has a similar power set to the hero. They, mm-hmm. they and, and I get that. I get that. But at the same time, when you can do something like uh, Infinity War and Endgame, which is the end result, yes, it's this big budget blockbuster type thing, but there's so many little intricate like storylines and callbacks. Again, it's not the type of art that they like, mm-hmm. but it's still art in and of itself, you know. And and I my argument is, you know, you look back in the day, every movie that came out was a western, yep. you know. So it's 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 gonna it's everything's on a, on a cyclical. And there was a sci-fi phase in the eighties right. and the yep. And horror movie, you know, yeah. there's gonna there's gonna be a phase. There's gonna be a, a time. It's gonna phase out at some point. Yeah, and like I, I think you know, it's again, it's a cyclical business. Right now, these are the in movies, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah, and Disney's out to make money. That's their job. Right, and actually, you know, I did remember Kevin Smith saying something. I don't have it handy, yeah. but I do remember he he mentioned something. Because he comes from both sides of, yeah. the, of, of the coin. That's why his, his take is probably the most interesting, I would think. Yeah. So, KB, all right. Yeah, well, that was the movie Jane Silent Bob reboot, but KB, you saw a movie... I saw Zombieland Double Tap. Double Tap. So yes. this is a sequel. Yes, it is a so sequel. So Jane Silent Bob was a reboot. This is a, a sequel. sequel. Um, so tell me, tell me about it. Well, like just again, non-spoiler as you can. Um, so basically, it it kind of picks off. It, it picks up, picks off, picks up about several years later. Um, they are in the there. The four our four original heroes are are um, 
in the White House, living in the White House. The four original heroes are Tallahassee, yep. Columbus, this. Little Rock, and Wichita. Wichita, yep. So they're living in, they're basically living in the White House, and uh, everything's going well, kind of family thing. Uh, and then there's some drama. Like I said, I'm not going to get too far into things. Um, and basically what ends up happening is Little Rock ends up taking off um, across the country, which then they have to travel across the country to, uh, you know, to find her. Um, and it, it was it was really good. It, it the, the jokes were, 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 were corny, it had the same feel. Um, I, I really enjoyed some of Tallahassee's um, Elvis infatuation um, in the movie. There's a lot of things there, like they go to Graceland and things like that. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, the other thing is Rosario Dawson is Nevada. I, 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 she's like one of my favorite actresses. I really, she takes on all kinds of roles. She's not afraid to take on any, any different, these different roles. Well, I think we talked about it in an earlier podcast. Yeah. Like we were talking about like the king and queen of like geekdom and, yeah, and, and she, she, she's up there. Yeah. She's definitely up there. So, um, and her, her and Woody Harrelson, very, very good together on screen. Good chemistry. Good chemistry on screen. Exactly. Uh, and I'm a big Emma Stone fan. Yep, as am I. I love Emma Stone. I, she can do me no wrong. Um, so, <laughs> so, um, so yeah. But overall, pretty good. Now, is it was was it as good as the first one? No, but it, it's still like like if if the first one to like the first one to me was like a nine. Okay. Nine and a half. This one's probably like an eight. Okay. If you want to say seven and a half, because you're you know not as you know fine, but like it's not like this horrible movie, and it's still enjoyable and good and um, a lot of fun. So, so I really enjoyed it. So in, in addition to Nevada, we also have Madison, yes. Berkeley, Albuquerque, and Flagstaff, which are some of the other characters looking at, like the cast. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I just think it's funny. Like, again, you know, I, I, never, I didn't pick up on this the first time. I was maybe, I think I was watching the original Zombieland, yep. like kind of in passing. But yeah, they all have city names. Except, as, except as like, for Nevada. Except for Nevada. She's a state. Yeah. So I just think it's I just think it's interesting. I don't know if there's any reasoning or meaning behind she that. She just does, she's just very private, so she just doesn't. So it's like, like he, people know these are yeah. all the cities we're from. I'm not going to tell you what city I'm from. I'll just say I'm from the state. I think of it's a conversation piece, you know. Um, so yeah. So again, really good movie. Um, I want to see it again. I'm not going to go to the theater to see it again, but you know, you wait for to, yeah, yeah, streaming, whatever, streaming or Redbox. Or whatever. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So uh, definitely check it out. It's it, it's definitely enjoyable. So. Big fan, and I'm a big fan of all those actors, you know, Harrelson, uh, 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 Emma Jess- Stone, Jesse J- Eisenberg, like. except for Lex Luthor, his Lex Luthor, Ex- except for his Lex Luthor. But other, but other than that, his other movies. You can go back and listen no, to KB's no, rant on Batman. No, let's Universe not listen to that. Um, so yeah, again, big fan of all the cast, and uh, yep. So, well, before you get in, and you also played the video. Well, game. that's the thing I want to pick up on. Okay, but before we do that. Let's let's do a little uh, callback right now because I did pull up the Kevin Smith interview when he talked about Martin Scorsese and he said okay. he said this. Uh, My feeling is Martin Scorsese never sat in a movie theater with his dad and watched the movies of Steven Spielberg in the early '80s or George Lucas in the late '70s. He didn't feel that sense of magic and wonder. I can still step into one of those comic book movies, divorce myself of that fact that I do this for a living release and my dead dad is back for a minute for two hours and it's personal for a lot of the audience you know and we're not arguing whether or not it counts as cinema but then he continued i guarantee you there's something he enjoyed with his parents like a musical i bet you some cats would say a musical is not really cinema but martin scorsese grew up on musicals and i bet they mean a lot to him these marvel movies come from a core They come from a happy childhood, and they're reflections of a happy childhood. He's not wrong, but at the same time, neither are we for loving those movies, and they are cinema. So that's his argument to the point. Again, going back to what I said. So so respectful and tastefully said. Well, Kevin Smith, oddly enough, he plays Silent Bob, but he's never at a loss for words. I think he's, to your point, very, very classy. But he also hits the nail on yeah. the head. It goes back to the 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 point I was making. Art is art. People can decide what is art to them. It's you know? a great take. Yeah, great absolutely. take. He's so. he's brilliant. He's a he's a brilliant uh, writer. It's, it's amazing what he comes up with. And that's the thing. He he's he's a big. You know, he said it in one of his specials way back in the day. He writes dialogue, and a lot of his dialogue is so realistic. Yeah. And that's why his movies. One of those do evening so, with Kevin Smith specials. Yeah, uh, and yeah. and the thing is, is that he. 
is so like good at writing like real conversation. That's why I think his movies kind of translate so well. Yeah. Like Mallrats is just a farce. You know yeah. what I mean? Chasing Amy is like the the plot is like when you really think about it in this day and age, it's it's really out there. The fact that a you know a guy's trying to convert a lesbian. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. we're in a different world now. But I mean, even just the character interactions and the discussions they have it at might the be time little, they're, they're 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 important to the time. Some of his movies. Yeah, and it might be a little crude and lewd in some of the you know the, the way he has his characters converse, but it's real. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like how real people would talk. Yeah. So I just I think you know he's very good at getting. He's yeah. very eloquent. Clerks too. Donkey Show. Again, I said <laughs> lewd and crude. A little over the top. <laughs> True, but I mean, like you. But I think that came at a different time. If but you it was watch funny. It was the funny. original clips. Hilarious. Never had anything like no. that. Chasing Amy no. didn't have anything like no, that. Mall rats. Mall rats a little was a bit, little over little the bit top. More. Yeah. But again, it was it was just Kevin Smith. Like again, but the character interactions, the discussions they have. Dogma. Dogma. Again, over the top, but great, like thought provoking movie. Yeah. Thought provoking movie. Um. So anyway, there was a lot going yeah. on, but I, I don't want to talk about yeah. Kevin Smith uh, too. Uh, the majority of this podcast, I want to get back to Zombieland. Yep. You gave it a seven? Eight. Eight. Where the first was... Like a nine for me. Okay. Where do you rate yeah. the video game? You played it. Video game? Uh, Probably like a seven. Okay. What type of game is it? Is it a it's, shooter? It's a zo- It's one of those over overhead zombie shooters where you use like the joysticks to, to navigate and shoot. Okay. Uh, so pretty good. Uh, the characters all look true to the movie. Um, unlockable characters. You can unlock uh, zombies that you can play as. What system did you get it for? I got an Xbox One. Okay. Probably would have been funner on the Switch, but um, could unlock Nevada and Madison, which was pretty cool. You can fight as them. Uh, and then each character has, well, there's like four different powers, and the unlockable characters have some of those four powers, like special abilities. So like uh, Tallahassee's, for example, is like spinning with both of his blades, like nonstop until his gauge goes down. Uh, Little Rocks is uh, what was Little Rocks? Oh, Little Rocks was kind of like uh, invincible for like you know her gauge as her gauge was going down. I think uh, Wichita's was freezing or uh, uh, not freezing. She was actually no, she make like a trap and they'd all the, the horde would just go to the trap and then it would like explode. Uh, and then Columbus's was slowing down like time. So now is this a single like do you play as each character or is you it like can, more of an RPG? You can play no 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 it's just ten it's just ten levels of straight like story and then there's like three or four side side missions to help you unlock the other characters. Um and then you can play up to four players locally. Okay. No online. So it's meant to be like a sit on your couch game to just people to I think that is so missing in like gaming today not that i want to get on a whole gaming tangent but everything is so online which is fun if you're in the comfort of your own home but i also kind of miss the days of like you'd have a couple of buddies over and we just like yeah like like mario kart or whatever you know whatever fighter or whatever whatever it was whatever was hot at the time you know so uh it it was pretty good now the story is interesting because it's 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 not that the story is interesting because it's not that much of a story it's just like 10 levels there's not a lot of um What's the word I'm looking for? Like movie, you know, there's no like movies, like and cinematic, things, cinematic like, things. Yeah, yeah. cutscenes. So no cutscenes and things like that. Um, but it starts with them in. Remember, they were leaving. Cal- they were in California with it's, Bill it's Murray. Long time, but it was Bill Murray. Remember, they killed Bill Bill Murray. Oh, did they? I, I it's been it, a while. well in that first movie, they killed Bill Murray. Did they? Bill okay, Murray's matching. So this time they, this game is about them getting to the White House, where the movie starts in the White House. So it kind of like bridges the first movie to sort of yeah okay. yeah even though it's not a, gr- a a ton of story but it's a fun like if you have a couple buddies over it's it, it's fun to play okay and and roughly you said it's ten levels a couple of side missions how long like so you completed it yeah I it, probably I did probably like six hours or something but okay. all the character abilities can be bumped up so there's replay value in bumping them up and then there's horde modes there's a few horde modes that. 10, 15, 25 levels. So would that be similar to like uh, the zombies on Call of Duty or anything like no, that? No, no. Like I said, because this is one of those over the top thumb shooters. No, but so like when you say when you say horde levels, like get, give us an explanation. Like, like round by round. So you have 15, you know, 10 rounds or 15 rounds or 25 rounds of just. So yeah, zombies. so it's, it's just, similar yeah. in Call yeah, of Duty like yeah. with Call of Duty. Yeah. Where they, you know, you have each round yeah. like 
You know, they they, they get more yeah. aggressive as the I haven't played progress. the Call of Duty Zombies since the first Black Ops. So okay, well, no, I was just I was just wondering for like the yeah. listeners if, if they're looking yeah. to get the game. The yes, it's a top down, but I'm yeah. wondering if like to kind of set the stage. And honestly, like just you know, if you're not in a rush to play it, wait till it comes down in price or or rent it or something. Is it coming? Is it coming out as a full sixty dollar game? No, it's like forty. Okay, but so so that means it'll be like twenty in like yeah by Black Friday. Yeah, exactly. So wait for that. But still good, worth it. Okay, and you gave it what was your rating on it? Oh, like a seven. A seven. Okay. So it's 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 fun. So check it out if yeah. you're if you're a fan of the franchise, the Zombieland. Yeah, franchise, if you're a fan of the franchise, you'll, you'll enjoy, enjoy it. More. it. Yeah. yeah exactly. If it's if you're just looking for something to to As buy, a gamer, no, probably not. Probably not. But if you're a fan of the franchise, yeah. do it. Yep. Excellent. Well, thank you for KB. Uh, we're not going to leave the land of zombies yet, but we're going to take a break. And when we come back from the break, on the other side of the break, we're going to get into some Walking Dead. Ooh. And we'll get our thoughts so far on what's been happening in season 10 and where we think the story is going. So we'll be back after these messages. Hey, everyone. I want to quickly tell you about 4041 Media. 4041 Media is a collection of podcasts in the southern New England area. And in addition to the great show that is Free Your Geek, you can check out 4041media.com and listen to the Psych Your Crime podcast to figure out why the crazies commit the crimes that they do. Or if movies are more your thing, check out the cast of characters at Movie Theater Time Machine. You can hear all of that at 4041media.com. That's 4041media.com. 4041 Media. For listeners, by listeners. I'm surprised you knocked off work early. I thought you couldn't get enough of the great outdoors. It's starting. Listen, if you've got something to say, can you just please get to the point? Because I don't have time today. Seriously. Oh, baby boy, why don't you just nestle in below me and let me baby bird a little bit of my wisdom into that pretty little mouth of yours. You see, people tend to get mixed up on about who they hate. Yesterday, I was public enemy number one. Now, well, now I'm the guy that picks the vegetables and takes out the trash. I'm okay with that, for now at least. But until this whole thing passes, I'm gonna keep my head down so people don't move me from the proverbial semi-us category to the category of them. That's not what's happening here. I didn't say is. I said that it will. You see, the boogeyman just stuck his gnarly skin-covered mask out from behind that closet door, and people are putting their shitting pants back on. And welcome back to the Free Your Geek podcast. And now we're switching gears, but still staying in that zombie realm. But we don't call them zombies here. We call them walkers. And we're going to be talking about The Walking Dead. Or roamers. Or roamers. True. Depending where you're going. Okay, KB. Well, we're going to be talking about The Walking Dead Season 10 so far. So we're going to be spoiling the first three episodes. We may also be giving some spoilers from the comic book realm. I know, KB, you're not caught up, so you don't have to worry about us spoiling that. Last five issues or so. so. Well, those are the big ones, um, because I can't tell you what happens. But um, we want to talk about keeping it in the realm on the show and what we're seeing, where we can kind of predict where it's going to go. Mm -hmm. Um, But what do you think so far of season 10? Better than I thought it would be. Well, I think since Angela Kang took over on season Mm -hmm. nine, which is really, really good, you know, they had to deal with a lot. They had to deal with Rick Grimes leaving, you know, Andrew Lincoln leaving after they killed off Carl. Um, you know, Lauren Cohen, Lauren Cohen, but she's coming back, she's coming back, but she left to go do whiskey Cavalier and you know, she wanted to be Good a show lead. that got canceled. It's, it's so tough in today's climate. There's so much, there's, to so, fight much, against. there's so much TV, so much content. Um, but yeah, so basically, uh, my, my thoughts are, and, and this kind of goes coincides with that, uh, Daryl and Carol both be are they're they're shaping up to be the two main. It's the Daryl and Carol show. Pretty much, it's the, it's their yeah. show now. We haven't seen much of Ezekiel. We haven't seen much. We've of, seen him like once. Yeah, we haven't seen much. I mean, we've seen Rosita and Eugene. Some we've of the seen OGs. Michonne. Michonne's been the other big like. Which, but the she's third. on her way out too. But she's yeah. Uh, Michonne's leaving. This is her last season. So I'm wondering what's going to happen with. Judith and RJ, if they're going to take them with them, I don't know what's going to happen with that. Are they going to kill Michonne off? Or is she going to have one of those things where she's got the movie that she's going to be in too, and maybe she's going to be in Rick's movie? I yeah. don't I don't know. 
But again, if she's in Rick's movie, wouldn't you theoretically think they would have to bring Judith and RJ, his yeah. son? To, yeah. to So I don't know how that's going to play out. Um, who else has been in that? Uh, Negan. Negan and uh, Gabriel. Yeah. And I'm blanking on his name right now, the dude with the missing arm. Andrew? Uh, no. Not Andrew. Um, Aaron? Aaron. Is it? That's is what it is, Aaron, yeah. Well, I don't know why I said Andrew. Aaron. Is it Aaron? No, it's Aaron. Right. Okay, I want to make sure. I'm I'm so like lost on that. But um, well, you were right. He's kind of the new Rick. He he is the new Rick. He's yeah. he's leading. I think he's going to be leading the charge now. Yep. And uh, so you've read up to where do you where do you see the storyline going now? I mean, Negan Negan's not I, really a prisoner anymore. I am interested in that because in the book, if I remember correctly, and this is why I said spoilers. Spoilers. Negan kills Alpha. Right, and there was that there was that line in uh, I think the most recent episode, where somebody said you want to help Negan or he said, something along the lines of, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, why don't you just leave? And yep. I don't know if that's foreshadowing because he leaves in the comic yep. book, he meets up with the Whisperers and he takes care of Alpha. Do we think that's going to be the last episode of this season, or do we think it's going to happen before that, or do we think it can drag on to another season? What are your thoughts? I don't think it's going to drag on to another season. I think the other question is how long does the show go now that the book is over? I think that's something else to kind of think about. Well, they is... already greenlit for season 11. Yeah. They've already renewed it for season 11. But they 11. still have some of the storylines. And I think season this, so 12 is already talks on the table. So maybe it goes to 12 seasons. Yeah, maybe. Um, I think the whole Negan situation is probably like my favorite part of the show right now. Because here's a guy that was de- we all despised, right, in the beginning. Like... With everything he did to to uh, Abraham and Glenn, Glenn, and like everything he went through, and, and just just the a hole that he is, and you know, now it's like rooting for the bad guy, in a way. Or I kind of root for him now. Or and again to kind of come full, kind of come full circle, circle. with this, yeah. Carl always like you know he was a dreamer at that point yep. before he died, where he he foresaw or he was dreaming about like this is the world we can build. And we need to learn to forgive forgive each other. And, mm-hmm. you know, Rick had his own way of doing that. But Carl's vision is somewhat coming to pass as far mm-hmm. as Negan working at the garden and mm-hmm. being, you know, some, somewhat more of a, a caring person. And I thought we seen, didn't we, if I remember correctly, now that I'm thinking about it, didn't we see that in one of Carl's like visions or visions dreams, or yeah. dream sequences back before? Yeah. Well, let's let's kind of rewind a little bit. So we start off season 10 with a s- satellite. Yep. And I was like, what is this? And it makes sense. Like, with this world now, who's maintaining all this stuff? All the space junk. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, it's it's kind of crazy. Uh, You know, so, and then it crashes, it's on fire. Our team, you know, the the survivors. Eugene wants the parts. He's, hey, he's using his genius. And uh, they have a little three men and a baby situation with Rosita. Speaking of Eugene, Sadiq, and um, Gabriel, which is kind of fun. Um, I like that a lot. I like that. The fact that Eugene's like tracking all like the the measurements and stuff. He's being very, <laughs> and Sadiq. Let's talk about him for a quick second. A little PTSD from yeah. being the only survivors, uh, being only a survivor from the last season with the Whisperers when all the mm-hmm. other, um, when all the other of our crew, yeah, of Hilltop and Alexandria, yeah. they had their heads put on stakes. Um, Carol's in a weird place right now. We saw that last episode was fantastic. Episode three where we don't know fantastic. what's real. But then we, before we get to there, because I want to talk about that a little bit, let's talk about um, the second episode where we learned how Alpha and Beta met. That was a good one, too. Again, I, really to your good. point, with Negan, we saw we never really got so much of a Negan backstory. Yep. We know about his wife, and, and, and that came to um, fruition in, uh, episode, in episode three, where they were t- him and, him oh, yeah, and Aaron yeah, yeah. were talking about yeah. it on how they led each other. Like, each one was responsible for the death of, the, of their own loved ones, yep. what, you know, all that stuff. But... The fact that Alpha meets Beta and immediately, like, kind of, like, worms her way into, like, and now he's following her. monster type guy, yeah. And it's like, you know, basically she's the one, the face that he's wearing is his best friend. Like, (laughs) that that was, like, it's so creepy, but it's so poignant at the same time. And And I I look at it and I'm thinking, like, who do you think would be worse? Who do you think, so, so of all the villains that we've said, from both the comic book realm if you want to rank them, if you want to rank like the governor, you want to rank like Negan, you want to uh, rank Alpha versus the show, who do you think has been like to me, the way I look at it is like the governor in the comic books. What was 
was he was a total a yeah. hole. He yeah. was a, like he was he was psychopath. Yeah, Negan is still entertaining. He's a psychopath, but he's still entertaining. And then Alpha in the comic books was very very creepy and very very weird. And they're kind of doing the same type of story with yeah. her in in the series. I feel like we get a little more of her though in the in the show than in the I book. agree. But in the series, we both had both Negan and the Governor. Like both very charismatic actors, like you know, yeah. you can kind of like feel. Yeah. You you kind of um, oh, what do you say? Like identify a little bit more. Yeah, Jeffrey Dean Morgan is great. Yeah, is great. And uh, what's his name? David Morrissey. Yeah, I believe David was Morrissey. Yeah. Like they're both great actors. They both make you kind of like almost root for them in a way. Like yeah. at certain points, or you understand root. the bad guy, right? Like you know the the, the his daughter, like the governor's daughter, and, and just all that. Like why he is the way that he is, and then you know you kind of see him kind of be redeemed a little bit, yep. but then he reverts to his true colors, which leads to his demise in the show. Yeah. S- similarly, but will he see the same fate? Negan has kind of done a one eighty from the character that we thought we knew mm-hmm. from this like vicious guy, and I think it was that third episode that he's. I think he was talking with Gabriel, or maybe he was talking with Aaron, but he basically said, "I'm not." that guy anymore yeah. i did what i had to do what i thought i had to do right and that's like yeah. again when you kind of look at it through that lens you can kind of understand him and yeah. you can kind of like get why you know again we loved glenn we loved abraham and the way they went out like you you're like oh this prick i hope this guy like like gets but what's he coming. had his own thought of what survival was but again what, but that's that's was. i think and that's kind of carl's point on like why he wanted to spare negan's life and just have them all work together because you don't know what certain people are capable of. Carl had to kill his own mother. Yeah. While she was going in, you know, when he was a kid, when she was in labor, like he he had to make a hard decision. Like, think about that. Like there, there's so many things that you don't really think about. And the, the great, like kind of like, if you want to pivot looking at it, I, and I think it was, maybe it was Aaron or maybe it was somebody else that mentioned, or maybe it was Daryl, said, are we the bad guys to mm-hmm. somebody else? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I can't remember exactly who said it, but it was that point was and brought he was up. saying like, it about the Whispers. If like, you came in from the yeah. Whispers point of view, you know, it's like, okay, here are these other people that are impeding on our way of life. It's kind of similar to, for any of the fans of the TV show Lost, yep. you had the others who were the enemies. Well, I mean, in, in reality, you know, a lot of the, um, you know, a lot of the terrorist groups that hate us, Right, I, I I'm saying they take the extreme, right, but, right, but right. what I don't, I'm saying, I don't want to get too. Political. I don't want to get in. I don't want to get political. But what I'm saying is, there's there there is a feeling in the world of America is kind of in your face, forcing their way of right. life on us. Let's let's I'm, leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. Let's leave bring, it at that. Let's bring it but, back. But but I just wanted to point out that the there's a strength in it. You know right. what I mean? It's it's very strong. But let's bring it back to, to the amazing yes. television show of Lost. Where, yeah. As I was getting to my point, the yeah. others are the you know inhabitants yeah. of the island they essentially see this new group of survivors who we're already rooting for because we're on their side. We see the others as the enemy. But imagine somebody else coming into your home and Mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, taking up resources or just like kind of like making it their home. You're you're feeling threatened. You don't know if these people are violent. You don't know if these people like have bad intentions. So I can see it from every group's point of view. Everyone's going to have their own uh, method of surviving. The mm-hmm. only reason that we're against the whisperers is because we've spent time viewing our group that we know and love. Mm-hmm. But if we had spent time as the whisperers and seeing what they've gone through, we would v- view Carol and Daryl and Michonne as the evil people. Mm-hmm. And it's just kind of a cool dichotomy they have going on right now. Dichotomy. I like that word. Hey, hey, These you know, I, words I, yeah, my word a day calendar sometimes pays off. Um, so, yeah. So do you think the whisper storyline is going to end this season? Or do you think it'll drag? No, on? I think it'll end this season. Yeah, and you think, I don't think they'll uh, drag it out? You think it's going to be Negan that puts the kibosh? I think so. I think there's a lot of things they haven't stayed true to the book on. I think this might be one of them. The, well, again, maybe I, in a little different perspective, though. But but I look at it this way. So we we we're as as a viewer, we like Negan sort of. You know, we we can't forgive. Yeah. What he's done to Abraham, to Glenn, to the group, like or I should say, the, you can't forget what he's done. Some people can't for, forgive and forget. Some people can forgive and not forget. Yeah. But my point is, is that for those viewers that are still like, I don't trust this guy. Yeah. Knowing the threat of Alpha, if he's the one that takes her out, how much will that acclimate him? Or even Beta. Or even if he takes out Beta, that's another big, just True. Just a big piece. True. You know, because she would be lost without Beta. Right. And where do we think Carol is going down this season? We talked about um, a little earlier. Episode three, what is real in this scenario? Mm. 
I, I, I don't know. I don't so, know what was real. So, Carol, for those that are listening a little bit later Not and can't sleeping. remember, can't remember uh, episode three of this yeah. season. Carol's been taking caffeine pills, and she's hallucinating on what, like, she's seeing some visions, and then she's waking back up. And we don't know, as a viewer, we don't know. We're kind of put in the same boat as her. Like, what is real? What is accurate? What is a that's hallucination? So there was so many times that like she was going through something I'm like, Oh, she's going to wake up and that's mm-hmm. a hallucination. And that was what really happened. Yep. And there's other things I'm seeing like, like, Oh my opposite. God. And then it's, it's all, she like wakes the whole up story, and... like Daryl about his dad being a trucker right. and, and, and he's like, my dad's not a trucker. What are you talking about? Right. So some of it was like weeded out, but some of it wasn't. And how about the beginning open, uh, the opening of the episode where these, these herds of walkers coming through and they're fighting for like two days yeah. straight or with, longer than that. Wasn't yeah. It? I forget. Something I forget. Ridiculous. Hours, but it's like no sleep. They had to do like, shifts they had to, it was just so incredible I'm, I'm trying to think as a viewer i'm watching that and i'm getting i'm feeling anxious yeah like oh my god this would be this is taxing like i'm feeling their their weariness their you know that they're and i think they built that up because they wanted to make the whisperers like suspect as right the people doing but it. can we believe that it's them or not they say it's not the whisperers so then what's happening is this another threat yeah is this something else that's doing that no who knows good stuff or it could yeah it could just be alpha just <sighs> Playing with them. Fun to see where this but goes. But see, I, I almost don't think so. Because one thing I can say about Alpha is she, her character does not appear to lie that much. I will rebuke that point because she's lying about her daughter being alive. But, but that's but that's different. But I'm talking about, like, with what her vicious plan is. I don't. She's never been like, oh, I'm going to deceive, deceive them. I'm saying, like, she always tells them exactly what she's going to do. Yeah, I can see in, that. In, 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 in repercussions, you know? Yeah. So that's... Well, it's that's curious. I'm, I'm curious to see. I think I think we'll see the end of Alpha by the end of this season. I think so, too. I just don't know where we're going to go because I can't remember what's next in, this, in the comic book. So I don't know where we go from here, which is why I think it's interesting. Maybe they kind of skew from the comic in and of itself. Yeah. I think, like I said, as I mentioned a little earlier, Angela Kang for season nine, and so far season 10, I think she's doing... No pun intended. She's killing it. Yeah, she's doing a great, great Cause let's, job. Let's face it, uh, seven and eight were a little rough at times. I, and again, it's it's in the eye of the beholder, and mm-hmm. who like you know again. Art but I just art. I just feel like there were times where there was um, just a lot of build up. You know what I mean? Like you'd have like two episodes where I'm like, okay, it's a lot of talk, it's a lot of conversation, it's a lot of build up, and then you get to some really good stuff in the middle. You know what I mean? It's kind of right. like chopped up. Where like since she's taken over. I feel like it's now a con- it's now a consistent feel right. that it had lost well, at some point. To your point, even even on you want to call it a down episode, the second yeah. episode with Alpha and Beta, like how they met in the air. See, I didn't feel on. like that was a down episode for but, me. But I think that's to your point. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I think you're trying to say is that even though it's like it's not around our main group of people, yeah. they find ways to make the show interesting because now it's like okay, now I'm gonna see how this came into being, because, how this relationship yeah, started. Yeah, because I think like in 7 and 8 when you started having all the communities and then it's like, well, this almost got Game of thrones in a way of like there's too many characters. Right. And a lot of them are very sim- simple. So I struggle to remember who's who and what conversation who right. had with who. And I like that that is kind of gone now. Well, because, it's all the communities are merged yeah. now. It's, it's it's all about them working together. It brings together. a lot of the bigger characters back together. So, so yeah, so I, I'm looking forward to it actually. Well, there you go. I'm. I'm. Yeah. I'm I think. Uh, I forget. I don't know if there's. A, it's eight episodes until the break, or I don't know how. I think. Yeah. And then, then I think it runs through like f- January or no November, and then I think it's on a break till February. I'll have to double check that. But uh, yeah. again, I, I like their their schedule where it's kind of like leads up past Halloween into the, like you know the early holiday mm-hmm. season, and then it's like okay, enjoy the holidays. After you know, in the winter time now, you're you're back. It's after mm-hmm. New Year. Get ready for more killing and yeah. and whatnot. So yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, the the remainder of this season and seeing what uh, lies in store for season eleven. Huh? Speaking awesome. of uh, what lies in store uh, for season eleven, let's talk about a new show that started on the CW. Now, KB, I know you're a little bit I'm behind. Not an Arrowverse person. You're not an Arrow, but I know you you were watching. I watched it for a little, little bit, bit of it. Yeah. So Arrow is ending this yep. season. It's yeah, the last I knew about season. that. Um, they're leading up to Crisis on Infinite Earths, and last the last crossover from last year introduced Kate Kane as Batwoman, yeah. and they kind of alluded to a Supergirl Batwoman team up. You know, world's finest. Yeah. Obviously, it's a female version yep. of Batman and Superman. Uh, but I want to say that this new show, uh, Batwoman, I think is is actually very 
and, and I might get, you know, if you disagree, feel free to let me know. I haven't seen it. I'm so. not saying you. I'm talking yeah. to the listeners. Uh, okay. If the listeners disagree, it. feel free to hit me up on- How many episodes is it now? Uh, three right now. Okay. But it's very, it's, I think it's very, the, the character of Kate Kane and her father, I think, are very close to the comics. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a little bit more of, a, of an age discrepancy with her and Bruce as far yeah. as she was like- uh, Bruce's like little kid cousin as opposed to them mm-hmm. being similar in age. But again, these are just like little tweaks to make the story work. Mm-hmm. But, you know, her father having his own private security team, her, you know, being like an army brat. And, and uh, I don't know. I think it's a really good series. It's very dark. Um, they try to add a little bit of humor, like her, uh, uh, Kate's stepsister is kind of like the comedic relief. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't know, that's kind of give and take for me. It's kind of touch and go. Like mm-hmm. I, sometimes I'm like, okay, but if you're going to be, Serious, be serious. Who are any, any big villains so far? Um, they introduced Hush. Okay, that's cool. And, and, that and we, cool. we talked about that on one of the earlier podcasts. Yeah. But the the really cool thing is, and spoiler alert if you haven't watched the first three episodes, right now the main series villain is a character called Alice, which kind of like almost touches on the Mad Hatter because you mm-hmm. know Mad Hatter yeah. was after his own Alice. Yep. But this Alice is actually Kate's sister who she thought died in a car accident, or we were led to believe it's, we don't know the full story yet. And we, we believe we're led to believe it's Kate's sister who she mm-hmm. thought died. And then she's, she's back. Um, there's all going to be kinds of twists and turns, but it's kind of cool seeing like, you know, you know, we talk about brother versus brother, you know, father versus son, you know, but then we have a, a sister versus sister, like in theory, like hero and villain and, and Nebula Gamora. Yeah, exactly. But I think I think you know this is a little dark to, and intense. And it's yeah. very very like Alice is psychotic. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think uh, it's it's a really good series, and I think I think because Arrow season one and two mm-hmm. kind of started off pretty dark, and they've led to a little. It's been a little bit less dark in my opinion, mm-hmm. but it's been more comic booky, which is fine. You know, again, I thought. There was the, the joke the whole time that Arrow on the CW was basically Batman, but because they didn't yeah. have the rights to Batman, they made it into an, a Green Arrow series, which is fine. You know, R- Ra's al Ghul, Ra's al Ghul, depending on how you pronounce his name, was a big proponent in there. Lots of the Huntress made an appearance. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's there's lots of homages to Batman in that sense. But I think that's going to kind of take the place of a dark series mm-hmm. where you have Supergirl, which is kind of more of the political show i guess you could yeah, say it's, i remember it's, supergirl being a bit more upbeat yeah i don't super, know about now super, i haven't watched supergirl it in a while. Is, it's very hopeful um but it's also very like you know it, it ch- touches on today's climate with and i with, like the guy who played superman on that show yes yes uh i can't think of his name now tyler tyler something um blanking on it but yeah, yeah he did a great job uh, melissa benoist is awesome yeah as kara and then the flash is just it's it's the superhero show it's the superhero the comic book superhero show you know again a lot of people don't like the iris and barry relationship i Mm -hmm. i think it's great like they introduced last a few seasons ago uh ralph who's the elongated man um who's super great he reminds me of jim carrey so Mm -hmm. he's got a little bit more of the comic relief you have cisco you have killer frost now known as frost you have uh some type of harrison wells Cisco still vibe he actually was depowered he he took a metahuman cure Oh, okay. But he, I'm curious to see how that pans out and plays out. But that's like a superhero show. And Legends of Tomorrow is just like this out there show, which is just yeah. amazing. It's very, not slapstick, but just very uh, abstract. Well, there's so much they can do with that show. But it's, it's time so, traveling. And, it's so quirky yeah. and so weird, and I absolutely love it. And Black Lightning is another like grounded, no pun intended, reality yeah. Have story. you been watching that one too? Uh, I've been here and there. I'm not, it's, there's so much TV as we talked about. Yeah. It's, it's just tough. Um, but right now I'm, I'm Flash, I'm Batwoman, uh, and I'm Arrow right now. Yeah. Um, but the crossover is going to be amazing. I can't wait to see how she fits into it. I think the hard part is they have them all in at once. Yes. But again, it's, it's, it's like anything else. It's like, you know, you, it, it allows you to tell that narrative that they, they don't interconnect yeah. with each other right now, other than the monitor showing up in each of the series warning of the foreboding crisis on infinite earths. But, you know, each, each series is self-contained. Mm-hmm. You don't necessarily have to watch, you know, for example, Supergirl to know what's yeah. going on in the crossover because they're all going to come together and there'll be like little yeah. hints here and there but there's there's not a lot uh you know of you, you don't have to necessarily cross reference mm-hmm. all that stuff and watch all of them but i also think if you're really into that whole genre mm-hmm. it helps to have it all on at the same time because it's all leading up 
to that crossover yeah. and it helps you understand the characters in each one. So I don't know. I think moving forward, it's going to be a great fit. I'm hoping uh, the ratings haven't been no, the best, they haven't been. but I'm hoping, but again, it's the CW. So, but you know what? The next show we're going to talk about the ratings haven't been the best for every, for some reviewers either. Well, let's, yeah. So, well, that's, that's a great segue. Uh, the reviewers right now, critics are so, so the professional critics, the users for Batwoman are, are compl- most of them are complaining mm-hmm. and their complaints are unwarranted. They, I think they're confusing. A lot of them yeah. are confusing Batwoman with Batgirl and not realizing it's a separate character because they're talking about her yeah. sexuality and whatnot. And I'm like, no, if you read the comics, like this is probably one of the more accurate representations mm-hmm. of the character, in my opinion, on the screen that we're getting um, mm-hmm. other than Barry Allen as the Flash. But mm-hmm. I think for me, I think the critics are just looking for something to pan and that's low hanging fruit and easy for them to bash. And again, everybody's got their own opinion. You want to say like, you know, you don't like the plot. You don't like the acting. Okay. I can give you that, but to bash the character based on their sexuality or or love interest. I'm like, that's, that's unfounded because that's exactly what the character is. But to your point, the critics are like lauding this next, this next show, but the, the, the viewers are not a big fan of it. So let's talk about HBO. And let's talk about The Watchmen. KB, you've seen this. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I, I, I thought it was fantastic. Um, I'm not hooked like I was on The Boys' very first episode. Very first episode of The Boys, I was hooked. Right. This is a little more build-up. I have a feeling by the second or third episode, we're, we're going to be hooked. Yeah, they, they were definitely laying the They're, on the, the, they're on the right path. So that this series starts off with... Uh, the Tulsa race riot, yes. which uh, I didn't even know. It was a know. real event. Yeah. It was a real event. I had to like Google it because, you know, it's, it's, I, I'd yeah. never heard of it. I'm not a historian. Um, but I think it was, you know, the, just watching it, it made me feel so uncomfortable. Yeah. And I, I, we mentioned before a little earlier in the, in the show, we don't get political, but the show is set in current times. It, it, you can't help it with the show right in now. In an alternate, is, yeah. but again, let's, let's set the stage. It's an yeah. alternate universe. It's not our real world, so to speak. Yeah. Um, Vietnam's well, a state. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, pretty much. So, like, for those that are unaware, um, maybe you watched the movie or maybe you yeah. haven't read the graphic novel. Basically, it takes place uh, during the Cold War initially. The, the Watchmen universe, the story that we are mm-hmm. accustomed to, starts place takes place in the Cold War era. And basically, Richard Nixon, uh, they abolish... Uh, presidential terms. So Richard mm-hmm. Nixon is president. Like five or six terms yeah. or something ridiculous. So, so I forget what they it is. They win the Vietnam War because of Dr. Manhattan. Right. And because tensions are high uh, with the Soviet Union and during the Cold War, again, spoiler alert, if you haven't read the graphic novel, one of the heroes, it's, it basically sets... Or seen the movie. Or seen the movie, but it's different in the movie. But the movie's It's similar, close. but it's, it's very different. close. In the graphic novel, it, it, it presents superheroes as mm-hmm. real people, not as like these idealized versions that we're yeah. accustomed to in Marvel and DC that are always virtuous and always like, you know, noble. The, these guys are, are dicks. Like right. these, these men and women are, are, are selfish and they're, they're, they're in it for themselves for the most part. They, they don't have the same um, virtuous attitude mm-hmm. that we were accustomed to. But in the graphic novel, Osmandius basically to, to kind of like um, put out, put out the, uh, the hostility between the U S and the Soviet union uh, stages, a, an alien devastating invasion, event, an alien yeah. an alien invasion so basically all of us have to in the world have to band together to repel this alien invasion so it, like all the tempers that were flaring between the two sides are now extinguished and now we're all working together as one for this other worldly threat mm-hmm. to to end it in the movie they placed it instead of a this giant squid because that's kind of less believable in the movie side of it as you could in a graphic novel this alien squid we have uh, it was what Doctor Manhattan gets yeah. put as, as some a blame. photon explosion that he and so they frame him for right yeah. and so so they they it's that's the the big kind of difference there but um yeah uh, I was speaking of Doctor Manhattan though he's still around in this universe yeah um, but this this new series takes place in 2019 yeah. uh, was it Robert Redford is president I think they said President Redford's had like something yep. like 12 terms or yep. something like that and. Um, People are still getting reparations, or they call them re- redforations, I yeah. believe, because of what's been going on from the the Tulsa race. Uh, the they call it black mm-hmm. Black Wall Street massacre, or whatever. Yep, well, I think it was the other terminology they call it by. And you know, we're introduced to these two young kids, this little boy 
that ha- you know it starts the series starts off in the 60s mm-hmm. before it go- comes to present day and we see the the race riot and we see this little boy survive and we we'll, we come back to him a little bit later in the show but uh now it's 2019 and the cool the, the cool I don't want to say cool the interesting thing is again not to get too political but kind of mirroring real life events mm-hmm. race is still a big thing mm-hmm. we have Rorschach as the symbol of uh, the seventh cavalry or seven K's, so it's like the KK, the new yeah. KKK, yep. all wearing Rorschach masks. So much so that the police officers who are predominantly black have to wear masks, masks well. except for like the captains who have more extravagant costumes. Mm-hmm. But I thought it was a really cool concept. And again, the really- other the other interesting thing on that to to build on kind of the whole not ra- well not race pop, but just the whole situation is the whole scene of that their their uh weapons are locked yes which could be a big discussion in this day and age well yeah but so between between the gun debate yeah. and between the race debates and everything well, not even debates but just the the you know the the police event the race the racial yeah. events and, and things that everyone are subjected to in today's climate to kind of see it mirrored yeah. through an alternate universe is very very interesting and i hear people complaining that it's very, very a uh, uh, more of a left mm-hmm. type of skew, on, on, as far as like the way they, it's viewed. But the the comic book is actually very uh, right. Mm-hmm. Is like it you is. know it's so again it's just it's just a different take. And again, we we talked about perspective when we were talking about The Walking mm-hmm. Dead. Looking at this universe now through a different lens from the other side, maybe you know I think it, I think it's going to be very interesting. I don't know if it's going to be so polarizing though for people. I think it might. It might scare off some people if they go I think too so. extreme with this. But again, I, we talked about it before. One of the reasons we we talked about Supergirl mm-hmm. and the CW shows. One of the reasons I, I kind of I didn't give up on Supergirl, but I've been I watch it when it streams on, mm-hmm. on Netflix uh, or or the CW app, the CW seed. But my thing is that it gets very very political, and when I watch a superhero show. I kind of want to forget that and turn off yeah. that that side so of my brain. So this could turn people off. Yeah. But I think this is more. It's it's less of a superhero show. It's just got that kind of like backdrop. Yeah. Where in essence, it's like this is a world with superheroes, but these are the real world uh, events that are taking place in this mm-hmm. alternate reality. It's very very interesting. It's a very. Uh, and I, I I wonder where some of them are. Well, so. We know the this, Watchmen. We know we know where Manhattan is. Well, we you never know where Manhattan right. is, right? But but we know that from what they've said, and, Osmondeus and, is alive. And, yes, a couple, a couple and uh, spoiler alert. Yep, sorry, uh, Jeremy spoiler. Irons. Jeremy yep. Irons is in it, so we're thinking that's Osmondeus. Yep, and we also know that uh, Silk Spectre is going to be part of the series. Yeah. Um, you know, but obviously she I'm was, saying in this episode we saw right. evidence of so, both of those guys. So say she was in her 20s back in the. Uh, the 70s, 50s. 80s. So we're talking what, like uh, 30 years later. She's probably in her 50s now. So and Night Owl. Uh, maybe we'll see him. I, I haven't heard about him being on, but uh, you know, I think I just think it might kind of alienate some people mm-hmm. with the amount of. Um, well, you think about it because they also they remember they had the owl. They were flying true. the owl. Archie. So Archie, yeah. So yeah. like, think Archimedes. about that. Archimedes. Arch- Archimedes. What, whatever, Archie, whatever you want to sure. call it, yeah. but. That was Night Owls, right? Or the right. design was. Right. So he's got to be there somewhere. Or it could just be an Easter egg to like, this is Maybe. the world that we're in. Yeah. It's like, you know, obviously the the uh, white supremacist group wearing the Rorschach yeah. masks. Like, yeah. It's funny because you don't really think about it. The movie did such a good job of painting Rorschach as like the, the best The one with character. the real morale. <laughs> but when you actually yeah, go yeah. back and read the book, he is he hates women. Yeah. He's misogynistic. Yeah. He's racist. He's an animal abuser, like you know. And again, that's the the hero that yeah. we tend to kind of fall in line with. So I'm curious to see where this series goes and, yeah. and the just different like um, threads it's going to weave as, as we deal with these real world scenarios in this in this type of uh, parallel universe, so to speak. So I'm very interested to see where it goes. I don't know if it's going to be the next Game of Thrones because I know HBO is obviously looking. I don't think it's going to be that. HBO is looking for it. We know we have a couple of uh, prequels yep. coming out. For Game of Thrones, so I'm hope I'm hoping. I think there's only this is an only an eight episode series, yeah. so I'm curious to see how it does numbers wise and re- review wise. That's probably why it's a short series. Yeah, but then again, no Game of Thrones was constantly eight, wasn't it? Right. So or I don't ten. know if it's it going to lead to at some point. I think. Yeah, but I don't know if it's going to lead to a season two. Yeah. 
or a season three. But let's enjoy the ride. Yeah. Let's again, if if that's the the route, like the, again, we talk about different types of art. Damon Lindelof, who's writing it, who mm-hmm. again circling back to Lost, was one of the writers and creators of Lost. He is now helming this series, and I'm curious to see how it's going to play out. I'm very I'm very curious. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch episode two. I think it's mm-hmm. episode one. To your point, didn't really hook me, but we see at the end of the episode. Yes. Uh, very similar to the movie and to the plot of the yeah. original Watchmen series, the police uh, captain, I believe it is. I mm-hmm. don't know if it, but he's uh, you know, white guy, old yeah. guy who's you know very um, has a lot of like African American yeah. officers, and he's actually like a really good dude. You know what I mean? You yeah. see him eating dinner with one of his, uh, you know, esteemed officers, and she's I can't remember the name of the the hero she plays. She Sis- puts is it like costume. Sister Shade or something like that? something like that? Yeah. I can't remember. I'd have to look it up. Um, but again, we see him at the end. He's hung. He's lynched. He's hung from a tree, um, and he, he, the guy that is in a wheelchair that uh, the the female officer meets a little earlier. He tells her earlier in the episode, "He's like, hey, do you think I could lift two hundred pounds?" Yep. And then you see him at the end, and the guys, the the police captain's hanging from the tree, and then uh, he's got the note that the boy from the flashback mm-hmm. from the '60s has. So. Did he do that, or is he being like, or is he a part of that? What is he doing that yeah. for? Is he seeking There's mystery? Re- There's definitely is mystery he seeking revenge in, yeah. for like what happened, you know, back in the '60s in Tulsa? Yeah. And the cool part again, symbolism: the blood dripping from the captain's uh, yeah. nose hits his badge the same way the blood it's the pin of the, the comedian. The pin of the yeah. comedian. So it's, it's a lot it's, of symbolism. It was a good. Yeah. It was a good opening episode. I'm curious to see how it goes. Um, yeah. So that's. I think it's going to be very, very interesting. Any other closing thoughts before no, we wrap up no, the show? I'm, I'm just I'm excited to see where it goes. Excellent, actually, yeah, I think so too. I'm curious. I'm I, I'll watch the eight episodes. Yeah. Oh yeah, see. I'll yeah, I think watch HBO. You know, uh, I don't know if it's going to be the, like we mentioned. I don't know if it's going to be the next Game of Thrones, but I'm, I'm interested to see where the, the show goes. And uh, I'm a big fan of Damon Lindelof, so I'm curious to see what he does with the show moving forward. But now we're going to go into a segment. I usually do a segment now. And KB, I don't know if you hear from him. We used to call them recommendations. Mm-hmm. I'm still trying to work on the name of the segment. I want to call it Cerebro Suggestions because I, I love alliteration. But uh, basically things that I think, using my Cerebro helmet, that I think our listeners would uh, enjoy either watching or listening to. Uh, so I have two things or here. Or playing. Or playing. We can talk about video games, music, movies, television. But there's two things I want to talk about, and the first is on Netflix. It's uh, so. Have you ever seen Zach Galifianakis do Between Two Ferns on like Funny or Die, where he interviews a celebrity? Yeah, yeah. Basically, this is Between Two Ferns, the movie, okay. and it's just it's absurd, but it's so fun. If you're if you're a fan of Between Two Ferns, all the celebrities he interviews, Keanu Reeves is like one of the first ones, and mm-hmm. he's he's asking to. Okay, Keanu Reeves, and it shows the little graphic. It says Keanu Reeves, R E E F S, and then underneath it says Bill or Ted, and then he goes, Keanu, on a scale of one to a hundred, how many words do you know? And he's just like <laughs> interviewing him, and it's just like so awkward and uncomfortable, but it's just Zach Galifianakis at his best. I think uh, you should definitely check that out if you're a fan of Between Two Ferns. That's on Netflix right now. There'll be a link in the show notes to link to that. And then the second is a Facebook page uh, run by a friend of the show, Danielle Cabral. Um, She was actually, uh, for lack of a better term, she was my date to Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. She invited me to go see that with her. And uh, she has a page on Facebook called The Key is to Educate. And that link will also be in the show notes. Um, Basically, what she does is she she drops knowledge on history, um, riddles, like just like fun facts about laws in different states. So it's it's just basically a page where you can kind of get educated on little mm. things, just like little uh, tidbits and pieces of knowledge to help make you a better, well-rounded person. <laughs> it's not where I weren't learned the word uh, dichotomy, but I could have learned it from there. Maybe. But I know we, we, she takes suggestions from the fans. I think she's got over 1,000 people following the page now. Um, so check that out. It's a really fun page on What are Facebook. we doing wrong? Well, we, <laughs> that's, she's and she's always promoting us. She's a yeah. fan of us. She's always like, you know, hey, fellow geeks. She calls people nerds, like, fellow nerds, what's going on? Because her nerd, what she geeks out about is history and knowledge because yeah. she, she's a history buff. Um, she's a big fan of Lizzie Borden. She works at the Lizzie Borden Bed and Breakfast uh. in Fall River. She's been on multiple, like, television shows, like, talking about the history of Lizzie Borden and the murders. So she's, she's just, she's really knowledgeable. She's mm-hmm. a really great person, um, really smart. Yeah. And uh, her page is awesome, so you should check that out. 
Um, so that's about it. Uh, then we're going to throw up the bat signal. Check out our sponsor page, for lack of a better term, 4041 Media. That's 4041media.com. Check out Movie Theater Time Machine, the Psych Your Crime podcast. You can link to both of those at 4041media.com, 4041media.com. We're also on Instagram and Twitter at For Your Geek on both of those. If you want to reach out to me personally, I'm jfree 82 J F R E E eight two on both of those platforms, Instagram and Twitter, and then check out our website, jfreethegeek.com. You can also like and subscribe on Apple podcasts, Stitcher, uh, Spotify, or just check out Podbean. And just type in for your geek into Google for your geek podcast will come up. You can subscribe in multiple different ways. If you want to give us a rating and review, we'd like that too. uh, help us spread the show, get more listeners. And if there's any suggestions that you want to uh, hear on future episodes, again, reach out to us on our Twitter and Instagram as well. So until that time, thank you for listening. KB. Get your geek on. Bye, everybody. You're still here. It's over. Go home.